<laughs> hey, Homer, you're missing out on some fun! The laugh of the audience is one of the most discussed parts of stand-up. It's the unflappable yardstick by which every comedian is measured. The laugh of the comedian, however, remains under-examined. Despite appearing spontaneous, a comedian's laugh is a critical part of their toolkit. Laughter changes pacing, meaning, rhythm, and tone. A well-deployed chuckle can assist or even save a joke. So in this video, I thought we'd quickly explore how comedians use laughter to change the impact and effect of their material. Did you hear about the goblin who got his left arm and left leg cut off? Um, um no. That's okay, he's all right now! <laughs> it may come as a surprise to find that laughter is not only a response to something being funny. Over a century ago, French philosopher Henry Bergson pointed out that laughter is an inherently social and highly contagious activity. All right. See? Just the noise you made when you stood up. I could do <laughs> <laughs> After performing experiments that eavesdropped on strangers in public, neuroscientist Robert Proveen deduced that most laughter is not connected to humor, but rather to the give and take of daily interactions. It's less about jokes than about relationships, which is why he reported people laugh 30 times more in the company of others than when alone. Laugh and the world laughs with you may be a tired old motto, but it holds true. <laughs> With this in mind, you can see how comedians use their own laughter to trigger laughter in the audience. Oh! Oh, ha, ha! oh beautiful! Greg Davies, Kevin Hart, and Chris D'Elia are regularly caught cracking up at their own jokes. In fact, their laughter is often the catalyst that gets the audience to break. It's somewhere in my mansion. Maybe it's in my shower. That's all I was wearing when I was crying. <laughs> Jeremy Hotz's hand-muffled giggles have become an inseparable part of his persona. His nervous chuckles add a hilarious contrast to his frequently dreary perspective. This is my face. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, ladies. I can be very charming in the dark. <laughs> Eddie Murphy even claimed he had actually retired his own honking guffaw, saying, It started out as a real laugh, then it turned into people laughing because they thought my laugh was funny, and then there were a couple of times where I laughed because I knew it would make people laugh. <laughs> I like that joke. <laughs> It's slightly odd to consider that something as spontaneous as a laugh can become a telegraphed way to manipulate the audience, and the ethics of it are still up for debate. John Hodgman stated, I find it comedically unethical to laugh at your own jokes, but conceded he had been guilty of doing it pretty frequently. In an episode of Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, Cedric the Entertainer even targeted what he called a pre-laugh as a cheap way of getting the audience to break. That comedy trick of laughing before you actually say a joke that makes people think it's funny. <laughs> so I told, I, told, I told Jerry, like, no, dude, that wasn't funny. Don't try to fool me with the, the pre-laugh. I'm not getting it. <laughs> it's a fair point, but on the other hand, what's so wrong with slyly manipulating the crowd? After all, there's clearly an art to it. Jimmy Carr's space dolphin helium laugh may be ridiculous, but it also serves a purpose. He'll often deliver a provocative joke or put down, then laugh at the audience's response, subtly reminding them to not take the joke so seriously. Well, I'll say to you what I say to all aspiring presenters that I meet. I'll have an Americano, please. <laughs> Ha ha ha!
Oh, I fucking love my job. The same goes for Bill Burr. He'll say something he knows will get a rise out of the audience before letting out a trademark cackle. If you're reacting negatively, you're also falling into his trap. I had no idea how difficult it was to be a white woman in the United States of America. Evidently, it's, it's really difficult. <laughs> Laughter is also a great tool to build suspense and momentum. Here Dave Chappelle takes a quick chuckle, adding a couple beats of suspense before delivering this spectacularly ballsy punchline. <laughs> so he rapes them. Anyone familiar with Chappelle will be more than used to seeing him hunched over in the middle of a joke, slapping the mic on his knee and even running upstage. You could say this happens in the moment, but it also gives Chappelle and the audience a few moments to breathe, and regularly escalates the audience's response to a joke. This is how I feel inside. On the other hand, if laughter serves to ingratiate the comedian with the audience, a straight face will often emphasize a peculiar point of view. Comedians like Stephen Wright, James Acaster, or even Nathan Fielder are all lovably serious. When they do break, it seems completely unintentional. Why are you wearing your sunglasses when you're looking at male pornography? I, you know... What I do in my own time is what I do. It's like... You can actually track how James Acaster's approach to stand-up has changed. The smiley affability of his early appearances has given way to a persona that's far more straight-faced. Acaster recalls the realization that he was funnier when he was more deadpan, even noting how his shows would go better when he wore jumpers because it made him look more like an outsider. I woke up, I knew it was going to be a bad day, man. My electric toothbrush died in my mouth that morning. <laughs> Although, who's to say these performers don't occasionally break their persona to win the audience over? The closest Anthony Jeselnik usually comes to laughing is when he gives the audience the kind of snide grin a serial killer would give to one of his victims. Yet, in Fire in the Maternity Ward, he does genuinely seem to laugh. Murder-suicide? Shut up! <laughs> However, viewed more cynically, it also serves a purpose. The laugh comes over four minutes into a routine about murder-suicide. It breaks the tension in the room and gives Jesselnik a platform to deliver his final punchlines. You can quite clearly hear him pause to wait for the audience to respond. Murder-suicide? <laughs> Maybe he laughed in the moment, but for a comedian renowned for deliberating over every word, who's to say it's not a calculated play to keep the audience engaged? Now that would be the mark of a true sociopath. Murder-suicide is a victimless crime as long as you don't leave behind any kids. Gotta kill them too. <laughs> The same goes for Jim Gaffigan. Usually he delivers his material in an amiable deadpan, but in Cinco he makes a rare exception when he strikes a little too close to his everyman persona. Just a regular old private jet to take a regular old guy to a regular old private island away from his kids. You know, I'm just salt of the earth, I'm an everyman. He may have just thought the joke was funny, but as Jason Zinnemann notes, the laugh also makes it clear that he's being ridiculous. It blunts the edge of a harsh joke by sending a signal to the crowd. Even if he didn't intend the laugh, who's to say it's not the instinctive move of a crafty professional? That's ridiculous. Whether laughing at your own jokes is a good thing is up to you. But it's pretty clear that there's more going on than meets the eye. Laughter is a tool, and its use as a social signal means it can completely change the impact of a joke. Because they do taste delicious,
but they don't taste as good as a young boy does and shouldn't <laughs> to a child monster, not to me, not to us, because we're all awesome. I personally think Billy Connolly is a great example of a comedian who can laugh at his own jokes without taking anything away from his comedy. What if the signal box was in fire? Well, he says, in that case, I'd dash down the road and get my Uncle Alistair. He said, why? He said, he's never seen a train crash. <laughs> Yet, I often find myself drawn away from comedians whose laughter eclipses their material. Hey, I get through it! Let me get through it! <laughs> this, this is my favorite joke! Hold on! I got... Regardless, the next time you see a comedian laughing at their own jokes, maybe you shouldn't take it at face value. After all, there could be deeper mechanisms at play. <laughs> All right then. <laughs>